Happy Sunday. All right, trying to get this light right. My husband pressed the button for me. So I think he's done his dig for the day, right, babe? All right, you guys have fun. Hey guys, welcome back to Bleed Through. This is episode number five. My name is Hasfa. I am the creator of Preston Every Design. <laughs> That's my three-year-old in the background. He and Daddy are heading out for the next 30 minutes while we hang out. So, so I'm glad to be back. Uh, today I'm going to be working on a bar cart for my shop. Um, I try to keep the projects that I do during this segment very simple so that I can talk um, and work at the same time. Maybe one of these days when I master the art of talking and painting, then I'll start doing some more elaborate projects. But for now, I'm keeping things simple so that we can hang out. Give me one second, guys. If you're looking for the keys, they're on the back of the door in the garage. <laughs> Real life guys, uh, trying to get my husband to take the boy out. They're going to go for a drive in the neighborhood while we hang out. Hey Linda, I see you guys. I'm actually a lot closer to the camera today so that I can see who's hanging out with me. I'm down here in Texas. Let me know where you are watching from. Super excited to be coming back for the fifth time. This is my fifth episode. Again, this is Bleed Through where we talk about overcoming adversity through creativity. So today, you must have seen the title is called Chapter 5, <laughs> Coming to America Chapter 5, and the girl named Cassie Masters. You guys, it's a good one today. Uh, so for our project, I have this bar cart here. I'm going to keep it simple. This needs to be stained. I'm going to use dark and decrepit because I'm going to go ahead and put it in my shop. And I just want to stain this wood because I don't like how it's looking. I'm not going to do anything else to the other part. I think it's fine. I just want to darken up this wood a little bit. I've got my dark and decrepit here. I have my Klingon brush from my friend Rachel. Rachel, thank you so much. This was such a generous gift. I'm loving this brush already. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this up if I can get inside it. Ugh. Sorry, maybe I should have asked my husband to open it before he left. Got it. Here we go. All right, I'm going to stand back here. I'm going to stand this, and then I'm going to go ahead and jump right on in and tell you today's story. So while I was working today, I received a message from several people asking, was there going to be an episode today? And I was really, I was really moved that actually people were expecting this to come back uh, because, as you know, I'm still i'm sure you know of myself doing this so getting that feedback is really helpful and it really makes me feel feel loved and i love that and thank you guys so that's why i want to talk about a young lady named cassie masters because today's lesson is all about how we make people feel and it's really not a lesson because i'm not here to speak to you but it was a lesson to me and so that's why i want to share it um so we left off last week when my new mom took me to get new clothing. Can you see what I'm doing? There you go. So she took me to get new clothing and slowly but surely I'm starting to adjust to my new life in America. And I came in November during the Thanksgiving holiday <clears throat> and school was starting, uh, I think, right after Thanksgiving. Let me get some water book. So school was starting right after Thanksgiving, and I'm thinking, <coughs> excuse me, I'm thinking that my mom's going to let me at least have some time at home before I start school. But no, guys, she threw me right into the thick of things. We started getting me ready for school even before Christmas break was out. So those following days um, during the Thanksgiving break, she took me to the school, got me registered. And the school was called Sugarland Middle School. Sugarland Middle School. And I was going to be in the sixth grade. Now, because of how the educational system is set up back home, I was actually put behind when I came to America because according to my age, I should have been in the sixth grade and not the eighth grade, even though back home, I was in S3, which is the eighth grade. And now, 
you know, the educational system is so far advanced, like how we learn, it's so far advanced that, you know, I was, I was ready, I just didn't want to go. Hold on, guys, I have a cough coming. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right, so maybe if I get a little closer so I'm not screaming, that will help a little bit. <coughs> so anyway, the way the system is set up, you're a little farther ahead in Uganda than you are here. So we go to school to register. <coughs> And I was really, really nervous. And I was scared. Uh, when we went, I guess they had some sports happening, some activities going on. So I was able to see some of the students. And I was so terrified because if you, one day I'll show you a picture, I looked like a little boy. Because back home, girls don't grow their hair, right? You only start growing your hair when you've become of age, you know, when you become a woman. So typically we all have short hair and long hair is a symbol of, you know, uh, womanhood. So here I am and, you know, I'm really small and I look like a little boy and I'm seeing all these, these girls who are tall and beautiful and they've got long hair and I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to fit in here? Are they going to like me? Hi, Rachel, I see you. And so I'm just so scared and I'm nervous and I don't want to go to school. And I'm asking my mom, can she let me stay home? Please, please, please. I don't want to go to school. And of course, she said no. So we go through the entire registration process. And <clears throat> I get ready for my first day, you guys. Let me tell you, for those days leading up to my first day, I wanted to die. I wanted to just crawl up under a rock and just hide. I wanted nothing to do with school in America. First of all, if you remember, I already had trouble with the dialect, right? So I had trouble understanding the way that the American English is, the way Americans speak. I really had trouble because we speak the Queen's English. And so American English was somewhat a culture shock to me. And I'm already, I already know I'm going to have trouble understanding my teacher, understanding my classmates, and I already feel out of place because I didn't have confidence in how I looked, and I just really didn't want to go to school. My stomach was in knots for those days leading up to school. And so, and then she's telling me I'm going to have to take a school bus. She says she would drive me the first day, but after that, I need to figure out the bus route, and so much. And now I'm starting to not like America. You know, all the good things, the chicken and the clothing all on the pear tree and all those wonderful things we talked about, they're now starting to kind of get on the back burner because now there's this big old obstacle in front of me, which is school in America. And, and I'm just hoping I could now go back to Uganda. <laughs> I was ready to go back to Uganda when she told me that school was coming. But anyway, so on my first day, <clears throat> I got dressed, uh, she made sure I had everything, I had nice clothing, I had all my supplies, and we get ready to go. By the way, I'm just standing this up to darken it up, it's dark and decrepit, I'm going to put this in my retail space, and it's actually finished. I'm going to give it a few seconds to dry while I tell you the rest of this story. So, <clears throat> on the first day, I get ready and I go to school, and I walk into the classroom, and all eyes, sorry, I had to put that stuff down. When I walked into the classroom, and I think I got there late because we're trying to figure out where my class was and whatnot, trying to figure out my schedule. So when I walked in, all the rest of the other students had already walked in. They're all sitting down. And so all eyes were on me as I walked through this door. And I felt like I had been just thrown to the, you know, the lion's den. And I'm standing there and I'm shaking. I've got my lunch kit, which was a Star Wars lunch kit. And I've got my backpack and I'm wearing black jeans and a black and white t-shirt. I still remember. And brown shoes. And I'm standing there in front of, you know, in front of the classroom. And I look over at the teacher and I look over at the student. But guess what? I couldn't tell who was the teacher and who was a student because the teacher was really slender and she was really thin and she looked like some of the kids. So I just had no idea where to go. So finally, she calls me over. She talks to me and she takes some paperwork from me. 
And then she turns to the classroom and say, okay guys, we have a new student uh, who wants to be her friend. And nobody wanted to be my friend. No one raised their hand. No one said anything. And so I'm standing there and I'm wondering why the teacher did that. She never should have done that because I just feel like that was not a good thing to do because it was terrible for my morale. So I'm standing there and no one is saying they want to be my friend. And I'm the only black kid in the class. I'm the only black kid. I'm the only African kid at that. And I'm looking like a little boy and I'm sure they couldn't even figure out if I was a girl, if I was a boy. They were just so confused as much as I was. And so suddenly out of the blue, a girl in the very back row raises her hand really enthusiastically and she says, she can sit with me, she can sit with me, she can sit next to me. And so my teacher, her name was Miss Martin, tells me to walk over to Cassie and I walk over to Cassie and Cassie had a desk next to her and she moved over and let me sit down. And that was my first, I guess you could say American friend ever. And that day, Cassie showed me around, we went to lunch, she sat with me in the cafeteria, she walked me and showed me around all the food lines and how everything operated. She told me about the tardy bells, just pretty much helped me to acclimate to the new system. And I just remember to this day, I remember how enthusiastically Cassie raised her hand to let me come sit next to her, right? And I remember how all the fear and all the anxiety that I had just melted away in that instant. The moment she just said, she can sit next to me, right? It wasn't just the fact that she said I could sit next to her. It was how she said it. It was the enthusiasm and the passion in, in her call for me to come sit next to her. And she also had this big smile on her face, right? And so one of the things I remember is that I remember her as long as I go through life I'll always remember Cassie Masters because she made me feel like I belonged she made me feel like I was wanted she made me feel like I was important and so for today I want to talk about what I've come to call C factors in life C factors S E E because C factors are so important and C is an acronym the letter S the letter E the letter E like C uh, it's an acronym that I've carried through life. It's something I learned in multi-level marketing. And if you've never had to do multi-level marketing, thank your heavenly stars. It is hard work. But I learned a lot of things during that season of my life. And so one of the things I took away was C factors. And when the C factors were brought up as a training exercise, immediately they drew me back to that first day of school and reminded me of the girl named Cassie Masters and how she exercised her C factors and instantly made me feel welcome, instantly made me feel loved. So I wanna share those with you today because it's so important how we make people feel in life, right? Because if we are gonna go on this beautiful journey of this beautiful thing called life and if we were to get the most and the best of it, we have to understand that it's important that we make those around us feel loved and feel important, feel included and feel wanted. So, the first S in C factors is smile. <laughs> Friends, I cannot stress how important a smile is. A smile is going to get us so far in life. You know, if you can face your challenges with a smile, if you can face your obstacles with a smile, if you can treat the imposters with a smile, if you can greet your enemies with a smile, it is such an important thing, right? A smile tells your mind immediately that you got this. When you are feeling fearful, when you're feeling doubtful, just smile. When you've got something weighing you down, just smile through it, right? When you feel like you can't go on, just put that smile on your face. You know, science has shown that it takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. And so I don't know about you, but I don't want my face to get all old and wrinkly and ugly. I wanna keep it looking youthful. And so if you want to keep yourself looking youthful and pleasant, make sure you use your smile. Smile at people. Smile at the world, right? You know, there's so much hatred in the world right now. So much is going on and not enough people smile. And I'm one of those people, I walk through life smiling and sometimes I get shocked when people are not smiling back because it's become a way of life that I, I, I forget that it's not a natural thing. It's not natural for everyone, but it's such an important thing when 
people are down and you smile at them it just does something for others so if you want to be someone that encourages and someone that uplifts and someone who brings others up when they're down you know it doesn't cost anything consider smiling consider smiling at the people around you consider smiling through your situation because when Cassie mastered plus that smile on her face it made me feel welcome it made me feel loved it made me feel like I was important and if it hadn't been for her I don't know what my experience would have been like but that was a foundation on the rest of my day my week my school year right and it was just one person it took one little girl to smile at me so I encourage you smile at smile at a total stranger right when you see someone feeling down smile at them right and you know, as creatives, we tend to be in our heads because I, I tend to tune out. I'm always creating something in my head and then I forget to like look at the people around me, but it's so important. So that's the one thing I wanted to share. So if you're going through something, I encourage you to focus more on smiling and you will feel a little bit better. So the next letter in our C factors E. And now the E is for eye contact. Now, in my culture, you don't look someone in the eyes unless you respect them, right? So if I don't respect you, I will not look you in the eyes. But if I respect you and I value you as a person, I will give you eye contact, right? And so eye contact is one of those things that is so important and it makes people really see you. So if you want to be seen, if you want people to know that you are here and you deserve to take up your space, look them in the eyes. Make eye contact with people. It makes people feel valued, but also it makes you take up your space. And so I remember when Cassie smiled and looked at me as she said, she can sit with me. Immediately, she and I connected. Connection is so important. If you want to make people feel important, really connect. Because what I've learned from John Maxwell, I call him my Uncle John. He's not my uncle. You know him, the leadership expert, John C. Maxwell. He says that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So if you want all this knowledge that you have as a creative, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, right? If you want all of this knowledge to, to be cared about, you've got to care about people. Otherwise, your knowledge is useless to them. And you know, there's value in what you have to offer. But if you don't care about people, they're not going to care about what you have to offer them. And so caring for others, we can show that we care through eye contact. When you take time to look someone in the eye, it shows that you really care. So smile and look people in the eye. And the last E is enthusiasm. Cassie said, she can sit with me. <laughs> she smiled, looked me in the eye, and she enthusiastically invited me to sit with her. And how that made me feel was bigger than anything that I could think of, right? Because her enthusiasm really conveyed that she genuinely cared and wanted me to feel comfortable. And so I want to talk about enthusiasm, going through life enthusiastically. Now, this is not just about, you know, interacting with people. It's about dealing with all of our situations. Let me grab my brush and put my second coat on this real quick because it's dry now. I'm going to move a little closer to you. So we've got to go through life enthusiastically, right? We've got to face our problems with enthusiasm. See every problem as an opportunity, right? Um, there's a quote that says, the only thing that guarantees a successful undertaking of any challenge is a belief in the beginning that it can be done. The only thing that guarantees a successful undertaking of any challenge is a belief in the beginning that it can be done. Well, how do you tell yourself that things can be done? Enthusiasm. When you've got so much trouble, right? If you can change your attitude and enthusiastically approach a situation, I guarantee things tend to move a little faster. I remember when I was trying to get out of debt. Um, I was a single woman. I was 20, 22. I was, yeah, I was 22 and I had a lot of student loan debt and my job wasn't paying well. And I had incurred a lot of credit card debt, consumer debt. And I remember knowing and understanding that I was going to need to get out of debt. And uh, I told myself I was going to get excited about getting out of debt. 
I was going to stop groaning about paying my bills. I was going to get excited about every single payment that I made towards my credit card. So I went through the Dave Ramsey plan, Financial Peace University. And when I wrote down my debt, you know, when you start doing the debt snowball, every single time I made a payment, I got excited. I celebrated. I threw little get togethers with my friends to celebrate getting out of debt. And I approached it with enthusiasm. And it made a world of difference. Every obstacle that has come my way, if I tell myself that I can do it, it feels a little easier to do it. You know, when I was in uh, middle school, I was a runner. And I hated practice because it was so hot. You know, I'm down in Texas. It's hot out here. When it's hot, it's really hot. And so I didn't like track practice. But then I remembered, if I can get excited about it, then it was nothing. And so I'm not saying that enthusiasm is going to be the end all to all your problems, but it's going to make things that you have to go through a little easier. If you have to go through your troubles anyway, you might as well face them with a little enthusiasm, right? And so, you know, enthusiasm is beyond not just how we treat others. You know, I remember earlier this May, when I went to Florida and I met Dion Woods. Now, I had never met her in person. This was my first time. She walked up to me. And I think she's like, I think she's like the Oracle. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't tell I say that. You know, I, but she walked up to me and she just hugged me and smiled at me and was enthusiastic to meet me. And she's like, oh, I'm so pleased to meet you. And I'm thinking, this woman does not know me from Adam, but look how she just made me feel. She has no idea how she just changed my life. And so when we enthusiastically make a choice to make people feel loved, to make people feel important, it really makes a difference. I have two friends who are watching right now, uh, Rachel and uh, Linda. But earlier, I'm trying to get monetized on my YouTube channel, and Rachel told me, Girl, we got this. Girl, I'm going to help you. We're all going to do this. So she's been rallying and getting everyone to watch my channel. And she's doing it with such enthusiasm that this morning, you guys, I woke up and I only need 39 hours to get monetized. Now, it's not been easy for Rachel to do what she's doing. She's got a lot going on in her life. But she's doing this so enthusiastically that she forgets that it's another chore added onto her list. But that's what I'm talking about. When we can get enthusiastic about caring for others, about doing things and going through the challenges in our lives, it will change our perspective. You know, trouble is going to come. But how we see trouble will make a difference. You know, Robert Frost says the only way out is through. There's no way out unless you're going through. So if you're going to have to go through, you might as well do it with a smile on your face, look to your troubles right in the eyes, and have some enthusiasm. And I guarantee you will find that life is a little bit sweeter. So just think about the people you encounter. Think about the people you meet. Be sure to use your C factors, use your smile, use your eye contact, and be enthusiastic towards others. And approach your problems the same way. Smile at them, face them head on, and enthusiastically declare yourself victorious. Because I have come to tell you that you are capable. You are fully capable. You can do this. We can all do this. So that's all I have for today. Uh, this cart is done. It's going to dry and I'm going to send it over to the shop. Thank you so much for hanging out. I look forward to seeing you next week. I'm thinking we'll probably do a QA. and uh, I want to take some time and just sit at the camera and check in with everyone if there are any questions so that we can get to know each other. So I probably will take off Next week, I won't take off, but I'll just show up so that we can hang. We'll have a hangout session, maybe even a Q&A. So if that's something that you guys think would be awesome, I am totally down for it. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Hasfa. I'm the owner of Press and Every Design, and this is Bleed Through, where we talk about overcoming adversity through creativity. Thank you for hanging out with me, and have a great week. I'll see you next time.